Hi guys, OpenAI added a new model to chat GPT and it is GPT-4. But like it says right here, it's not available for free accounts. So in this video, I'm gonna be comparing GPT-4 model with GPT-3.5 model so that you can see the difference and decide if it's worth it for you to get paid membership to access the new model. Now I'm gonna be making more videos on chat GPT because I can see how beneficial this tool is. So if you're not yet subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And if this video sounds interesting to you, click on that like button and let's get started. Yesterday, OpenAI released an update on chat GPT, and now they have an option to use GPT-4. And right here, they have a note for this release. There are no updates for free accounts. So if you're using a free account, you won't have any updates. So let's go to chat GPT. And I did get a subscription. So now my window looks a little bit different than the free account. So at the top, you can see that I have options for selecting models. So there is the default GPT 3.5. And this is the one that is used for the free version. And you can see they rate the performance on three of these criteria. So reasoning, speed. So this one is the fastest. And the third one is conciseness. So I also have access to the legacy one. So that one is slower and the conciseness is a little bit lower in this one as well. But the new one that we got yesterday was the chat GTP4. And in here you can see that the reasoning is way much higher now. The speed is decreased and conciseness is also improved. If I select the GTP4 right here at the bottom, you can see that Currently, there is a limit of 100 messages every four hours. And in the release notes, they said they're going to be adjusting it as we go. So now I decided to test the fourth version with the 3.5 version. And yesterday I did a video exploring how you can use this chatbot for game development. And I asked what's the capabilities of the chatbot that can help me with Unity Game Engine. And I got five points right here. And I already regenerated response a couple of times to see if there's gonna be any changes. So those are the answers that we got with the GPT 3.5 version. Now let's go and compare it with the new version. So for the new version, right away, you can see that we do get a larger list. So there's actually 10 things. And I think personally, this version is actually answering this question more correctly. If you look here, it starts with, I can provide you with practices, design principles. I can help you with writing, understanding, debugging. I can recommend assets, plugins. So it actually gives me the list that I was looking for, the things that it can actually help me out with. But for this one, we see that it starts with, I have knowledge, I have a thorough understanding, I have access, I can help. So there's a troubleshooting and I can understand. So it's more about what knowledge it has. So that is definitely an improvement. Now let's see if there's any changes that we have for coding. So right here, I'm asking ChatGTP to give me a movement script for a top-down 2D game with new input system for Unity. And this is the GPT 3.5. So we got the player controller here in the code. You can see that it's using public float speed to expose this variable to inspector, which uh, Unity recommends to use serialized field instead of making variables public, unless you want them to be public. And the approach that I took here is by using the input master class, which is generated from the input actions. And after the code, we get some description of the script. And now let's go check at GPT-4 and how it looks now. So right here in the code, you can see that it's actually using the private and serialized field. So it's actually using that recommended approach for exposing variables. So that's an improvement right here, but it did take a different approach of using the input system. It's using the on move event, which is gonna be called from the input action instead of using the generated input master. With this approach, it did manage to create a cleaner code. But if we take a look at the text that it provided afterwards, it actually gave us steps that we need to go through to set up the script. And this is actually very useful because sometimes you forget things like making sure that the rigid body gravity scale is set to zero. And then it also gives you instructions how to set up input system 
installing it and all of these options it didn't finish because it ran out of characters that is allowed but let's try to ask for those steps separately so it looks like it's using the exact steps that we had there which is good and here we get more steps but again we still run out of characters and i think the character limit for gpt4 is actually smaller than for 3.5 because I was able to get longer text than these. So I guess that is a downside of that. Uh, but uh, you can always ask to get the rest of the steps. So those are the complete instructions. Okay, guys, so that was Chad GPT-4. So I see a significant improvement, but is it worth it to get the membership to have access to the newer model or not? That is up to you. It depends on what is your budget and how frequently you're looking to use it. But I hope this video gave you a better view of the difference. I'll be making more videos like this on my channel. So be sure to like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.